All right, let's make some noise for the Lord, huh? Okay, so show of hands, how many of you, either in the room here or online, how many of you have ever worked for an organization that had a mission statement? Mission statement. Okay, most of us. How many of you know that mission statement? <laughs> okay, a few of us. That's excellent. That's good. Um, how about this one? How many, of you, uh, how many of you know that Harvest Bible Chapel has a mission statement? That had better be all of you. <laughs> like, if not, we're going to get some help. Like we, right? All of you should know that we have a mission statement. We talk about it quite a bit. We've been talking about it a lot lately. We're going to talk even more about it. Okay, here's another one. You ready? Okay. How many of you have a personal or household mission statement? Ooh, I didn't think we'd have anybody, to be honest with you. I didn't think anybody would nail that one, but I'm, I'm glad that we had one. Right? A personal. Now listen, if you're here and you don't have a personal or household ministry, you should feel terrible. Actually, no, I'm just playing. Because honestly, I really didn't even have one uh, for our family until somewhat recently. But can I just say this? Y'all are missing out. Right? Y'all are missing out. We're gonna, we'll talk a little bit more about this as we go through. But I want you to keep that in mind as we go through our message today. So um, let me just stop and say, good morning, Harvest. All right, welcome to Harvest Bible Chapel, North Iowa. If you're here in person or you're joining us online, we're, we're really glad that you've come to worship with us. Okay? My name is Pastor Terry for all of our uh, visitors, and um, let me get you uh, caught up a little bit in where we are for the year. Okay? Um, our year is starting off quite a bit different than what we're, what we're used to. Maybe, so not, maybe not so much week one. So last week was kind of week one of the year, and we started off, as we usually do, with what we call the State of the Church Address. And we went through and we talked a little bit about, um, you know, kind of even some business stuff, uh, finances, budget, that type of stuff, but also kind of the, the mission values and, and where we want to go in the future. And uh, we're continuing on um, through most of the month of January, uh, working through that same process. And I want to just stop. I get, make sure I have everybody's attention. You with me? And just say the next few weeks is not going to be typical of uh, how we usually bring a message from the Word of God. Okay? Let me just say it this way. I'm getting way out of my comfort zone. Okay? So can I just ask for some grace? Here's what I'm talking about. Typically, our messages here at Harvest Bible Chapel, we, well, well, most of the time, we're walking verse by verse through a book of the Bible, okay? That way we get the full context, we know everything that's going on, and so that's typically the way we, uh, we bring the Word of God. But uh, sometimes we also do what's called topical messages, meaning we would pick a topic like the, the topic of prayer, and we'll talk about that one topic. But even with that, usually what we do is if we're talking about prayer, I choose one verse about prayer, and we walk through that text verse by verse. Are you still with me? For the next few weeks, yeah, we ain't doing almost hardly any of that. I mean, it's going to be totally different than what we're used to. Uh, we are going to be in s several different main texts like every week. Okay? So I'm going to ask you to kind of be uh, ready quickly to act with your Bibles, follow along closely. Um, we're going into a series called Vertical. So we are taking a break from walking verse by verse through the book of Colossians, and we're starting this week with a series called Vertical. We're going to talk about vertical mission, we're going to talk about a vertical church, and we're going to talk about vertical living. And I want to stop and give you really two reasons why we're doing this. And uh, believe me, I wouldn't be doing things this way if I really didn't think it was going to be uh, important and fruitful for our church, for us individually. Okay, you still with me? First thing is I want to either introduce to you or remind you of who we really want to be at Harvest. What are we trying to accomplish? What is it that we're trying to do? And I think, honestly, not only at the beginning of the year at a time like this, but just with everything that's gone on over the last year, all the changes that we've had, all the things that we've faced, I think this is a great time for us to, to stop 
and really be able to, to look forward and just be reminded of where it is that we want to go. Right? And I said introduce. Honestly, we've had a lot of people who have uh, joined our church over the last year or so. So this for you will be a way to really get an understanding of what some of this common language that you've been hearing from us is all about. Or if you're really new, it'll really give you a good direction of where this church really is, is aiming to go. Okay? So I, extremely important. You with me? Say important. Okay. Here's the second reason. I want you to be able to implement these things that we're going to talk about, that we do talk about, and that we're going to talk about on a regular basis. I want you to be able to implement them into your lives as well. Does that make sense? So this isn't just about gaining knowledge. We're going to talk about things that are common language around here, vertical and four pillars and our four W's. And so all of these, uh, purpose and all of these things that we really want to emphasize, we're going to talk a lot about those, but it really comes down to what are you going to do with it? I mean, that's kind of what it always comes down to, isn't it? Okay. So um, one, I want to introduce or remind you to what, where we want to be going at Harvest. And then two, I want you to implement these things into your life as well. Okay. Um, so we're talking today about vertical mission. And I already mentioned a mission statement. A mission statement really is kind of the um, why you're doing what you're doing, right? Your destination, where it is you want to go, and, and how you want to get there. So when I'm talking about a mission statement, that's really what I'm talking about, which is important for the church. And here's, here's what we're going to see today. Today we're talking about, again, vertical mission. And here's the thing. Striving for a vertical mission helps us accomplish our purpose. We'll talk about what that is, but I, anybody for wanting to accomplish their purpose in life? A few of you, the rest of you? Okay. Come on. Anybody for wanting to accomplish your purpose in life? I think all of us do, right? So by really striving for a vertical mission, it was, it's going to help us accomplish that purpose for our life. And I say us, I mean the, the church, it will help the church accomplish the mission that God has set forth for it, okay? But also you. Today, I'm actually going to challenge you to write down, uh, to be thinking about, and this week, write down a household mission for yourself. And I say household, that could be, maybe it's just you. Maybe it's you and a spouse and your kids, whatever it might be. I want you to be thinking about that as we go along, because I'm actually going to challenge you to put down into writing a mission statement for your family. Because if you can express your mission and you can write it down and you can keep it in front of you, you are much more likely to accomplish your purpose in life. Amen? All right. So today what we're going to do is we're going to use the, the three vertical sta standards that we have in our church's mission statement as an example. We're going to walk through that as a way to hopefully encourage us, entice us, open up our eyes to seeing God do more in our lives this year. Because I, I feel like we've talked about that recently, right? Last, last week, we um, finished out our service with a devotional about our theme for 2021. Somebody tell me what that theme is. God of more. You nailed it. The God of more. And we talked about how we're, we're, we're like anticipating. We're excited. We're we're, we're looking for God to do more in and through our church and in and through our lives. And so as we continue on with that theme, uh, we're, that's why we're moving into this vertical mission for the day. Okay? So again, today we're going to use the three vertical standards to our church's mission statement uh, as an example and a way to encourage us to, to do our, our, our own. So let's go before the Lord in prayer, shall we? I'm going to need help. Father God, thank you for your goodness and your blessing. Thank you for um, the love that you have for us, the encouragement that we have, the excitement that we have to be able to just to ex expect, to anticipate, to, to look for you to do more in our lives. I pray that you would do more here in us today, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so if you're ready to move forward, say jump. All right, so here's the, the first vertical standard that we have in our mission statement here. It's to glorify God. Okay? Let me ask you another question. Uh, who here has taken a, a road trip in the last year? Taking a road trip. Awesome. All right, let me, now keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Let me pick somebody. Who am I going to bully here a little bit? Let me pick somebody. Let me pick somebody. Denise. <laughs> she, was, she was pointing at Mark, so I picked Denise. 
Where did you go, Denise? Florida. Florida. You road tripped it? You drove? Wow. How did you get there? He drove. He drove. Okay. Interstates, back roads, Company. took a boat. Row, row, row your boat. Okay. So how about this? Why did you go? For fun. Okay. So your destination was Florida. You got there by driving, interstates, back roads, a little bit of everything, and you went to have fun. She may not know this, but she actually just gave us an example of a mission statement for the trip that she took. And here's the thing. Um, I solidly believe that every mission statement will, every good mission statement will have these three things. The first thing it will have is the, the destination. That's our vision. Where is it that we want to go? Right? What are we trying to, to get to? Okay? So that's the destination of the vision. The, the second thing it will have is the, the mission, which really is the path. It's the path that you're taking. It's how you're going to get to that destination. Okay? The other thing it will have is the, the why. Right? It's, that's our purpose. Why? why? Well, that's why I asked her. Why, why did you go? And she looked at me like I was crazy, like none of your business why I went. Right? <laughs> That's, so those are, the, and those are the three things that we have in our mission statement. Again, I'm asking you to bear with me today, okay? I know this is a little bit more kind of like church business oriented, um, but I promise we'll bring it back around to, to our application, okay? So that is really the, that is really the three key components. And, and I'll just say, it starts off, I believe that every, say every, every single mission statement should start with purpose. Every, and not only that, I believe that every single mission statement should really start with the exact same thing. It should start with like, we exist to glorify God. Amen? Turn, let's do what we do every week and open up our Bibles. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I want you to look at verse 31. And again, we're going to jump around a little bit today, so we've got to be quick. All right? 1 Corinthians 10, 31. And it says this. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. All. to the, You know what all means? All. Very good. Yeah, it means all. Everything that we do, we're supposed to do all to the glory of God. In fact, Isaiah 43, 7, this is um, God speaking, saying, everyone who's called by my name, here's the line, who I created for my glory. That's you, and that's me, that's all of us. Every one of us created with the purpose of glorifying God. So our mission statement, we might have to go back to it on the screen, our mission statement is that Um, we exist to glorify God by making disciples of Jesus Christ who love God and love people. That's what we're walking along with today. So right from the beginning, we exist to to glorify God. Can you imagine if every mission statement out there actually started that way? Right, if every, every, every individual, every business, what about this? How about, what if it was Google exists to glorify God. Amen? No, seriously, can I get an amen for that one? <laughs> How about Twitter exists to glorify? Maybe I shouldn't have gone there right these few days. Um, Facebook, um, Fairway exists to, to glorify God. Let's see what else. How about this one? How about the U.S. House of Representatives exists to glorify God? Or the, the U.S. Senate? Or how about this one? The office of the President of the United States exists to glorify God. Could you imagine what it would be like? Could you imagine what our country would be like if every mission statement started with the purpose of glorifying God? Because that's what we're called to. And when we don't have that, when when that isn't the why we're doing things, that's what purpose is. It's why. why. Why do we come to church here? We don't, we don't come to church here because this is where our friends are. We don't come to church here because we love the music and we want to sing. We don't come to church here because the pastor dances around like a knucklehead on the stage. That's not funny. Don't laugh at that. We come because we want to glorify God. Amen? 
That's the purpose that we have. Why do we go to work on Monday or whenever you go to work? Because we want to glorify God. Why do you fill in the blank? Why do you do sports? Um, why do you have your coffee, I mean, your coffee group, right? I mean, you're getting everything we do. And guys, this is the whole core, the whole meaning about what we talk about when we use the word here, vertical. All the logos that you see around, the vertical logo that you see, this is what vertical is. Vertical is all about us living out our purpose focused on glorifying God first in everything that we do. Amen? So if you haven't been around here very long or you're visiting us, whether you're online or in person, again, when you see our logo or you hear us talk about vertical, that's what we're talking about. It's fulfilling that purpose of glorifying God in everything that we do. So let me ask you this. What would change? What would change in your life if your mission statement started with I exist, or our family exists to glorify God. Striving for a vertical mission will help us accomplish our purpose of glorifying God. Okay? So, first of all, glorifying God. That's the purpose. That's the, that's the why. That's the why we do this. Why do we exist? Why are we trying to get where we're trying to go? Glorify God. Here's number two. You still with me? All right. Number two is make disciples. Matthew 28, 19 and 21, through 21 says this. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you to the end of the age. Hey, let me ask you a question. You know, our, not just our culture, but really even worldwide, people tend to put a lot of emphasis on someone's last words, right? Uh, have you ever been there to hear someone's last words? How about this? Let me ask you this. If you could have been there to hear the last words of anybody that you could think of, uh, who would it be? I mean, um, it, it, we could go philosophical. We could do like Aristotle or, right? I, uh, me personally, my, my grandfather passed away at a real early age, and I was real young, really young enough where I didn't understand it, I would have, I would have loved to have just been there and been able to hear, like, like what would he have said? You know, before he, what, what would he have said? I, I think that's huge, but you know who's, like, if I could pick one person, I know you're going to be like this, yeah, that's a pastor answer, but why wouldn't it be Christ? Amen? Well, guess, we get that. We get that with the Word of God. This, this is the final instruction that Christ gave to his apostles before going back up into heaven. How awesome is that? We have that availability. And so his, his instructions, his final instructions was what? It was to go. It was to make disciples. And it was to teach. Let's break that down a little bit, okay? So first of all, we said glorifying God is the, the purpose of our mission, in our mission statement, right? And if glorifying God is the purpose, then making disciples, for us, that really is the path. It's the how do we get to the end destination. It's, it's the mission. It really is. It's the mission part of the mission statement. And so when we look at our text, the first word that's right there in verse 19, it says go. All right, now there, there's a reason why this is really important in the command that Christ is giving here, right? Christ is actually saying, since you are going, that's, that's actually what he's saying in the text. As he's talking to his apostles, he's saying, I've already commanded you that you're supposed to go and spread the gospel. Since you're going, here's what I want you to do. But the reason why we have to stop and focus on the word go is, quite frankly, most of the time, we're not really in go mode, are we? I don't, maybe it's just me. All the time, I'm falling out of go mode. I'm falling out of that mode where I'm focused on going and making disciples and teaching people about the things of Christ. And I'm the pastor, guys. And it's what I'm supposed to do on a daily basis. So I know how difficult it is. But Christ right up front says, listen, you've got to make a choice. It's not going to happen accidentally. As a church, in your families, you're not just going to accidentally make disciples of Jesus Christ. 
Yes, people are going to see how we act. And the way they see us act should lead people to Christ. But there's so much more that we're going to have to be intentional about. And I just want you to know, right here at Harvest, we want to be intentional about making disciples. The, the number one way that we make disciples here is through small groups. Which would lead me to say, if you're not in a small group, maybe you might want to think about it. Okay? Some of you have reached out to us in the past and wanted to do small groups and just haven't been able to follow up, follow through with it. Now's the time. Please reach out to us. We'll help you get connected. Okay? Um, but discipleship is something that has to be intentional. And not only does he say that, that you're going to have to make the effort to, to go, you're going to have to decide that you're going to go, then what he wants us to do is he wants us to baptize. And we have been blessed to, man, since I've been here, which hasn't even been three years, um, I, I really should count sometime. I, I don't know, we've had like 50 baptisms in, in the last three years, probably. I'm trying to be conservative. Amen? Right? So Jesus' command to the apostles is to go, and that's very evangelistic. In other words, go tell the world about me, and as you do, I want you to baptize. Now, that's a direct command. We are supposed to, to baptize people, but I want to be clear. Baptism isn't about salvation, right? Baptism is an outward confession of our inward connection with Christ. It is a command. We get, we give our lives to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and then we get baptized. But it's more than just that. What Jesus is really saying is he's saying, connect people to me. You get that? Get them connected to me, because without the power of Christ, it's going to be really, well, Without Jesus Christ in your life at all, you can't glorify God. The only way you can glorify the Father is by having a relationship with the Son. And the only way that you do that is that time when you finally call out to Jesus Christ, confessing that you're a sinner who needs a Savior, putting your faith in Him and His work at the cross for the forgiveness of your sins, and then the, the best we know how, trying to live for Him. Amen? So we have to go... We're baptizing, we're getting people connected with Christ, and then we're teaching. And what do we teach? Well, we teach, them, we teach them to observe all. Everything that Jesus had commanded us, everything that he's given us in the scriptures, our, our desire is to, to use this path of making disciples for the purpose of glorifying God. Are you with me? That's what we're trying to do here. And that moves us, by the way, let me just stop and ask, right? Striving for a vertical mission helps us to accomplish our purpose. So are you living as disciples for Christ right now? Maybe, how about this? Do you have a relationship with Christ right now? If you don't, if you've not yet made that confession of your sin or accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, please come see me afterwards. Uh, as I say pretty much every week, it is the most important decision you are currently making, Amen. Right? So glorifying God is the why. It's the purpose. It's why we're doing what we do. Making disciples is how we're getting there. So where is it that we're going? Where our hope and our prayer for you is in point number three, which is this, love. <laughs> it's love. And I know for most of us men, that's the word that like makes us shut down. Like, ugh, he's talking about love again. He's really going after the women. No, I'm not, guys. It's for all of us. Look at Matthew 22, verses 37 through 39. If this is one you do not have in your, underlined in your Bible, highlighted, marked, I would encourage you to do so. Matthew 22, 37 through 39, which says this. Actually, if you go back to verse 36, it said, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Verse 37, And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 40, On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So to summarize that, on these two commandments... On love. On love depend all the law 
and the prophets. That's what God is calling us to. So when we list out our mission statement for you and we try to do it regularly, our prayer is that you would be glorifying God by loving God and loving others. The way that we get there, the way as a church that our aim is to get you there is through discipleship. That's the call that we have. Glorifying God is the purpose. Making disciples is the mission. And Jesus Christ has given us the perfect example of what love looks like, hasn't he? Jesus Christ, being God, leaves the perfection of heaven to come down here. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his Son, Listen, Jesus Christ came to earth to be obedient to the Father. Do you get that? His love for the Father moved him to come to earth to be our sacrifice. And his love for us caused him to virtually climb up on a cross and die a brutal death for us. Amen? So that we could have the forgiveness of sins so that we could be reunited to a right relationship with the Father that we rebelled against. So love is the destination of the mission statement. It's what we're going for. Love God. John 14, 15 says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. We love God as we are seeking him, as we're we're looking to to please him, to grow close to him, to, to know him more. And to have him work in our lives more. Our theme is what? Wow. Our theme is what? God of more. So we're looking for God to do more in our lives. Amen? And the second part of that is love people. Jesus demonstrated that by his love for us by sacrificing himself. It's a sacrificial love. So again, our prayer is that Harvest would be a church whose people are glorifying God by loving God and loving people. Hey, do you know the love of Jesus? Have you experienced that personally? As our worship team comes forward, I want to again, um, well, actually, I'm going to, I want to give you our mission statement. This is the, the mission statement that we have for our family. It'll sound familiar. Our family exists to glorify God by living as disciples who worship Christ, walk with Christ, work for Christ, and witness for Christ. That's our four W's. We'll talk about that again here soon. Our family exists to glorify God by living as disciples who worship Christ, walk with Christ, work with Christ, and witness for Christ. This week, I want to encourage you, take the time. Take the time to make your own family's mission statement. I would recommend it starts with we exist to glorify God. Amen? You can steal mine. It's okay. But if you're going to steal mine, make sure that you really make it your own. And then keep it in front of you and let it drive you towards your purpose of glorifying God. All right, so as our worship team is up here now, we're going to kind of keep with the same theme of the God of more. We're going to introduce a new song. Uh, It's a song by uh, Vertical Worship. It's called Not Done Yet. And we expect that God is not done yet in our lives. Amen? Amen? All right, let's spend some time worshiping together.